In this video, I'm going to show you how to create this simple video inside of a different shaped photo cutout using a mix of Photoshop and your choice of Premiere or After Effects or any video editing software really. So the first thing we're going to do is actually start in Photoshop. This is the basic idea of what our final result is going to look like, but I'm just going to file revert this image back to the original. And I've chosen an image to start with that is a nice side profile. It's got some nice, uh, it's a, got a clean background and a nice shape for us to work it with and will work well for our final result. So you have some flexibility here, but something like this would work well. And the first thing we want to do is just create a cutout of the person. So this isn't going to be an in-depth tutorial on creating cutouts. There's many ways to do that in Photoshop, but there's actually some really easy new ones, such as if we're using the quick selection tool menu in the top toolbar, there's actually these automatic select subject buttons, which will automatically try to select the subject from the foreground. And in this case, it does a really good job for a photo with a clean background like this. Uh, you can also, if I command D or right click deselect that, uh, you can also use more traditional tools like uh, lasso or pen tools to manually go through and create a selection. But especially for difficult to select hair, it's all curly and frizzy. This, in this case, using something like the selection tool will help us because, and this is the same thing really, the object selection tool. Um, I can just kind of give an outline and it'll do the same process. However, the cool part here is if I click the select and mask button, I can choose this refine hair button. It'll automatically kind of refine the hair, give us some clean edges. And if you want, you have further options on the right hand side, such as adjusting the edge radius, shifting the edge in or out a little bit if you wanted. And also like in certain areas on the neck, I could fill it in a little bit. It's gotten a bit too transparent because of the shadow. You can use the plus and minus button. So the minus button, I can decrease the brush size. The minus button will remove from the selection. So we're bringing back our original image a little bit. And the plus button will kind of add to the selection. So if for some reason that there was just a part where I needed to clean it up even more, I can use this, this plus and minus brush. So with whatever refinements you've done, you can press OK. And now I'm just going to personally right click layer via copy. So now we have the original photo on one layer and then the cutout on the other. Now there's a lot of different ways we can proceed and a lot of different ways to do the same things that we're going to do in Photoshop. But I'm just going to give you one branch to follow. Highlighting the original layer again, I'm going to go to layer, new fill layer, solid color. I'm just choosing a solid color. Technically, you can make the background whatever you want, um, but I'll just make it a nice yellow color. I feel like that pops nicely with the blue shirt and press OK. And if it, you didn't have it behind your layer, you can just drag it behind the layer. That's why I selected the original photo. But regardless, with the color fill layers, it's nice because you can always double click on them and change the color later. Now, the next thing I want to do is kind of create some slices and cutouts of our cutout. So I'm going to grab my rectangular marquee tool and you could just eyeball slices like this, but just to be precise, I'm going to use the ratio tools in the top bar. So I'm going to change the style from normal to fixed size. And this is going to be different depending on your canvas size, but I'll try something like 30 pixels height. That'll make sure that no matter what I do, I can never make a, more than 30 pixel tall uh, vertically sized stripe. And then the width, I'm going to change it to 9999, whatever, just make it the max it can be. So now all I have to do is click. It'll automatically create a fixed size stripe with those dimensions. And if I'm working on add to selection mode in the top here, I can just click and kind of segment out my image. Uh, I'm, I'm keeping them kind of balanced and even, but I suppose you could make them in all different variations of balance. Now I'm going to just click this little swap button and that'll swap it so that now we have 30 width and unlimited height. So now I can slice it vertically and you don't even have to slice it vertically. You could just leave it horizontal sliced or whatever. There's lots of flexibility. I just don't want to slice important things like 
his pupils or stuff that's really distinguishing features of the face. So I'll just do something like that. Maybe a thin block here and then maybe a, a thicker slice there. So we've got a little nice grid going here. And now I can just go to layer, layer mask, hide selection. And that'll hide the selection. So this is what we've done. We've got our background layer filling it in. And now we have all these different squares that we can begin to work with. Now, one way to kind of add to that illusion that this is a bunch of puzzle pieces or squares, because right now it does just look like a grid over this image, is to further go and cut things out or mask things out. So I'm going to switch back to normal mode. And let's say I just want to take out this little chunk right here. Since we're working on the layer mask, make sure you have the layer mask highlighted. I can just use something like the gradient tool set to a solid black color and just do that. Just uh, fill it in with black. And I can kind of mask out some areas just to create some contrast of edges and different illusion. So I've kind of sliced out these two corners. Uh, I can even slice out entire individual blocks. But another thing this does is create a cool section for us to add graphics or text into later. And you can do this in Photoshop or you can save it until you're working in Premiere or After Effects so that you can get a more uh, anim so you can just do the text layer in whatever video editing program you're doing and animate it and do whatever you want or if you just had still logos or designs you can kind of add whatever flourishes you want but the main idea that we're going to want to do is segment out a, a chunk of these blocks to be a video so in this case uh, I don't just want to do like a rectangle I could but it would it wouldn't be as interesting I think so one quick thing I can do to kind of fill in these blocks is I'll just duplicate this layer. So we have the whole thing duplicated and I'll right click and convert this layer to a smart object and that'll just kind of group it all in one. And then I'll just grab my rectangular marquee tool. Remember work, work in normal and additive mode. And I'll just select out those blocks that I want. It's pretty easy because we have this large margin of error with the border. Don't have to worry about being too exact. And then I will, I guess you can just right click layer via copy or select the inverse and delete. Um, since it's a smart object, you'd have to rasterize it and then delete. But either way you did it, um, just you can delete or hide the, the scraps. You should basically end up with one layer that looks like this and then one layer that looks like this. So now there's many different ways that you can create a mat out of this new selection that you have. But the way that I'm going to use is by simply saving it with a baked in transparency from Photoshop. So to do that, I'm going to hide this layer for now because we don't want that double soft edge making things stronger. And I'm just going to select basically what we have our foreground and our background. If you had anything else like text or graphics, you basically want to select it all together and I'll press command G that'll turn it into a group. If you don't know the shortcut, then you can just go to layer, create group or group layers, does the same thing, group layers on group layers with whatever you have selected. And so now we have the those layers in a group and I'm going to hover over the thumbnail for this section, this little layer that we had, which is this. And I'm going to hold command and click on the thumbnail. That basically selects the entire contents of that layer. It's a neat little shortcut. Again, I think that's control if you're on Windows. But you'll see that the mouse pointer change to the selection button. And now that I have basically the select, I just wanted the selection from it so I can turn the visibility of that layer off again. And I still have the selection active. I just want to highlight that group that we made and go to layer, layer mask, hide selection. So now we have this portion hidden. In this case, uh, I'm not being a perfectionist. You do see a little bit of the fringe from, I just did a quick selection. So some of that green from the original background is probably gonna faintly be there, but it's not too big of a deal. But we've basically created this window 
of transparency. We're basically going to lay this over a video track. Also, at this point, if you wanted to, you could make sure you have all the sizing and everything right. Um, since this was a photo, this is going to be a unique size, but if I press Command T, I can kind of position it or flip it horizontal or vertical, whatever I want. And remember, anything with text or graphics, you could you could put in there in Photoshop, but I, I'll wait. I already know that if I'm using a standard video size, it's going to be 16 by 9 ratio, so... I can try to just fit it into a 16 by 9 ratio already. And I'm just using Command T to use, that just gives us the free transform tools. But you can also do this in your video editing software. And you know, I don't really mind if I'm cropping off some of the body here, the, the face is really what is of interest. So once I have this mat with this transparent window, I'm going to go to File, Save As, and I'm gonna save it on my computer as a PNG file. And you can save it wherever you want. Just whenever you do have it saved, I'm going to then open up the video editing program of choice that I want. And you can simply drag that PNG into the project media panel to import it. And you can also drag in whatever video clips that you want to use. And uh, I'm just going to create a new sequence. So I'll go to file, new sequence. Here's where you can choose whatever size you want. In this case, I'm just using a 1080p preset. It's kind of like a standard HD size, 1920 by 1080. But if for some reason you were doing this for a vertical video, like an Instagram story or something, you could just flip that ratio, 1080 by 1920 in the custom settings. But we're going to stick with the 1080p preset. If you are confused about sequence sizes, I have a video on my channel called Understanding Sequence Sizes that will help you out, goes more in depth on what to pick and how to pick and all that. But this will create a new sequence in that standard HD size. I can simply drag that graphic that we created. Obviously it's much larger, uh, but it's in the same ratio. So I can simply scale it down. And even if I didn't put it in the same ratio in Photoshop, I can basically do the same thing, scale and position it down to be whatever I want. And now we basically are, gonna, are just gonna be working with layers to create this composition. So I'm gonna move this from video track one to a track above, whether it's two or three or whatever other layers we have involved. And then I'm going to take a video clip and I'm gonna put it underneath that video. So if you see what this looks like, again, you can also scale your video clips and position them. One easy way to position is if you highlight the motion tab in the effects controls panel and make sure you're in your program window, you'll just be able to move stuff around with your mouse and scale it with your mouse. So an actual, uh, so you can actually do it like this, basically play around with it and see what it looks like inside that window. Maybe see what different videos might look like. And again, just highlight the motion. I can scale and move it around pretty easily. And I think something like that looks pretty interesting. Of course, you can trim it to be whatever size, but when I press play, you'll see that we've perfectly created that window, creates this cool video inside of this shape puzzle effect. And from here, you can add whatever text and graphics on layers above this little two layer composition. So with a mix of Photoshop and your video editing program of choice that can work with layers, you can create this video inside of a puzzled out object or shape. If you enjoyed this video, you can check out hundreds of other Photoshop, Premiere Pro, and After Effects tutorials in the playlists on my channel. Thank you so much for watching, and I'll see you in the next video.